So we are learning about the derivative, and we are learning how it came about in the first place. In the last video, we talked about slope. We talked about the slope of a linear line and how it was very easy to compute because it was consistent at every point in our line. Then we also talked about slope of a quadratic function and how it was different depending on each different place you looked at the graph. We talked about a specific example where we wanted to figure out the slope of the graph at 3, and we estimated the slope of that graph by using our secant line. So remember, secant line goes through two points very close to the point, and the secant line gives us an average rate of change, or therefore it estimates the slope of our line of our quadratic equation at that point close by. So what we really want to do is we want to figure out the slope of the tangent line. The tangent line touches our quadratic equation or any equation at the point in question, and it has that exact same slope of the point in question. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is, and that's going to give us the slope of our exact function. So let's go ahead and let's talk about these secant and these tangent lines in comparison. So reviewing, secant line estimates the slope using the college algebra slope formula between our two points, and the tangent line gives us exact slope of the one point using their calculus method. So what I've drawn here is I've taken the graph that we've been focusing on, and I have both lines drawn on the same graph. Then I've zoomed in on this box here, and that's what's given me this here. So we can see I want the slope of this point, but I use the estimation of the slope by giving those two points there. So basically what we want to do then is we want to take our secant line and we want to get it closer and closer and closer to our points in question, and that ideally will give us our tangent line. So Back here, if our two points are close together, the secant line is nearly the same as the tangent line. So again, nearly is not quite good enough for us, but this is how that definition of the derivative came about. So if I want the slope of my x value here in this picture, I can start off by using the slope between this point and this point, and that will give me an estimated value. Then I can do a little bit better by using the slope between this point and this point. And then I can do a little bit better by using the slope between that point and that point. And then I can do a little bit better than that by doing the slope between that point and that point. And hopefully you get my drift. The closer our two points are, the closer we get to this tangent line over here on the right. So if we want the slope of our x value, we use another x value very close to it, and so that's where this x plus h comes in, where we want our h to be very small. And notice in the scenario that I worked through, our h value just became smaller and smaller. So here I had a specific h value, here I had a smaller h value, a smaller h value, and a smaller h value. And so that's what this arrow here is supposed to represent. I want this x plus h, to get smaller and smaller and smaller, so basically my h ends up eventually disappearing and I end up with just my x value here. So that images this picture over here on the right. I have the exact same points in question, my first point, second point, third point, fourth point, and again, the smaller these values get, the closer I get to this tangent line here. So. I want my secant lines to get closer to my x value, and I will end up with my tangent line, where my x plus h value ends up just being my x value. So let's set up this scenario again, but let's actually do it in function format rather than the visual format that I have over here on the right. So I want to compute the slope of my secant lines and make them smaller and smaller, so eventually I end up with the slope of my tangent line. If I'm going to compute the slope of my secant lines, that means I'm going to use two points, hence my college algebra methods and my slope formula. And that was defined as my rise, or the difference between my y values, over my run, 
or the difference between my x values. But let's tweak this a little bit. Instead of me using the notation of y's, let me actually use function notation. So I'm going to use f of my x2 value, because that just gives me my second y value, minus f of my x1 value, because that just gives me my first y value. And my denominator stays the same, my x2 minus x1. So I'm just switching up my notation. Instead of y, I'm using my function notation. OK, well, let's go back to this picture that I have over here on the right. Instead of me saying x1s and x2s, let me use my two x values that I have denoted here. So my x here, I'm going to use that to represent my first x value. And my x plus h here, I'm going to use that to represent my second x value. So let me substitute those in for this specific function here. So instead of x2, I'm going to use x plus h, which is just my original x value plus a very small value, which I'm just calling h at this point, minus f of my first x value over okay, my second x value, which again I'm representing to be x plus h, minus my first x value, which I'm just using x. So I'm taking out my x2s and my x1s, and I'm plugging in the x values that I used in my picture situation. Now I can actually simplify this a little bit. In my denominator, I have x plus h minus x. Well, if I dropped the parentheses, this x and that x will end up to being canceling out. So that gives me f of x plus h minus f of x all over just h. But let's think about what we actually want to do here. So this h represents the difference between my desired point and any point that I'm actually using. But I want my secondary point to become smaller and smaller and smaller. So what I want my h value here to do is to get closer and closer and closer to 0. And that's where your limits come into play. So that's why this is in the limit chapter. So I want to take this function or this slope formula that I just manipulated here, and I want to look at it as my h value gets closer and closer to 0. And so what we have just done is we just came up with the definition of the derivative. And so that is what we have here. Notice this part of the equation, the limit as my h value becomes 0, or becomes smaller and smaller, of my slope formula that we manipulated from the beginning. Now this over here is the notation that we use to represent the derivative. And I'll talk more specifically about the notation when we get into the examples of these. But I just want to point out, notice that we can switch the notation between y equals an equation and f of x equals an equation, and so that's what these are pertaining to here, except for they're talking about the derivative portion of that function or that equation. What the derivative gives us is what we were hoping that it would be, the slope of the tangent line. And then we know the slope of the tangent line is going to be identical to the slope of our original equation. So once we plug in information into this formula, that gives us the desired slope of any equation, not just a linear equation, but the slope of any equation that we're looking for. Now, when we talk about slope, that means different things depending on different applied problems. So the slope gives us the rate of change, but the slope of the tangent line gives us the instantaneous rate of change. And another word for rate of change is velocity. And again, the tangent line gives us instantaneous velocity. So make sure you're paying attention on your homework. If the homework asks for specific things like an average rate of change or an average velocity by using two points, then you're going to use the slope of your secant line. And you do that by using your slope formula, which we came up with in college algebra. If your problem asks for the instantaneous rate of change or instantaneous velocity, then you're going to come up with the exact slope of our function using the tangent line, or hence using the derivative. 
All right, now that I have given you the formula, in the next examples, we're actually going to be using this formula to come up with the slope of specific tangent lines in specific examples.